What up and welcome back to First Strike. Here we've got UFC Fight Night up in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Little afternoon start. The first punch will go down at around 5 p.m. Eastern time. And we're here to give you guys four of our early looks to try to cook the books. I'm joined with the Apex Predators of the Octagon and MMA Jeff, Fanatical Jim, Subhuman Gaucho. Jeff, are you ready to rock and roll up here in Edmonton this weekend? Yeah, I'm excited that we have a later start this week, and uh, these Canadian fights always seem to be very interesting, so I'm looking forward to the card. Fanatical Jim, how about yourself? How you doing? Doing well, Mike. Yeah, it's certainly a UFC card, um, you know, but to Jeff's point, glad that we're starting later. I'm actually going to watch the whole thing this time, and looking forward to bringing the fight th fights down with you guys. Subhuman Gaucho, fresh off a white Russian weekend. Are you going to make the whole thing with us this weekend, so? <laughs> Yeah, that's right, man. It was a fun, it was a fun weekend, man. Those uh, those early cards, boy, uh, get to, get to drinking early, and it makes the uh, makes the day interesting. But um, yeah, man, I'm I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, Canada, it's, it's brought some fireworks in the past. Uh, this card is it's kind of wild, man. It's a it's a challenging one from a betting perspective, I think. But uh, first card in November, so we got two more months to uh, end the end the year with a bang. So looking forward to it. Speaking of a bang, they're going to have some rule changes for this Edmonton event and uh, allowing 12 6 elbows. They're allowing, they're changing the definition of the grounded opponent. So you can knee those guys right in the head. It's going to be real ugly. Hopefully, it's real gruesome. And uh, it's time to get to work, fellas. Speaking of gruesome, Jeff's going to open us up. He's going to talk a little Shore Zalal battle. A prelim spot. We've got a couple prelim spots. We've got a couple main event spots. And Jeff's going right after it, Jeff. Looking forward to talking about how we get paid in this first fight. As I had mentioned, or as you had mentioned, we got uh, Jack Shore versus Yusuf Zalal in this one for a featherweight uh, bout. It's the first fight on the card, which is always a scary one, but both these fighters are coming in in their prime, 28, 29 years old. They're pretty evenly matched up uh, in regards to the height and the weight, and uh, as I mentioned, the age here. Uh, Shore, he's fighting out of Wales, coming in at 17-2. and two. Both of his losses... Uh, came out of his last three fights here in the UFC, um, which I took special note of given the fact that he's only fought three times in the last two years. So out of the last two se uh, two years, he's got two losses. So I don't know. Ring rust might be a real thing. I know we talk about it pretty regularly. So, uh, you know, he's an excellent grappler who, uh, who definitely wants to take this one to the mat for his path to victory. Um, he tends to, uh, create the, the strikes from the grappling, but, uh, you know, he's got a couple of knockouts, but he's not necessarily a powerful puncher. He is definitely more of a grappler, and he is certainly not the most exciting fighter to watch. Um, his solid wrestling has earned him nine submission victories uh, in as, as a pro here. Um, he's a tough fighter out of Wales, as I had mentioned, and, uh, you know, he's shown he can go the distance as well. He's got four fights that uh, ended up going to decision, and he won each and every one of those ones. You know, on the other hand, you got Zalal here. He's coming in off a seven-fight win streak. Um, this is his second stint in the UFC. His first stint, he uh, he was three and three with, I believe, one no contest. Uh, he went back to a lesser known promotion of Sparta. He then jumped back into the UFC, which uh, he's gotten two wins back to back by rear naked, both of them by rear naked choke, and uh, shows me that his grappling has gotten a lot better. Um, he's a very tactical fighter and a great striker when he's on the feet. Uh, it leads to lower volume of striking, but when he does strike, his uh, his strikes are on point and very accurate. Um, he can keep it on the feet. As I had mentioned, he, he does like to be a tactical on the feet, but uh, he can also wrestle. He can get it down to the mat. And uh, as I had mentioned, uh, you know, he can transition very quick to the back, which uh, hence got him his uh, two rear naked choke victories there in the UFC uh, since coming back. He's got a different mindset as well. He did an interview and he, uh, he had mentioned that he's actually wants to become a champion. Uh, he's trying to take it a little more serious. And uh, I think this might be the, uh, the about to get him on the way. Uh, you know, he's living and fighting in Colorado. So uh, I think uh, I've never, I, you know, watching back at the tape, I've never seen the guy gas out. Now there's a lot of finishes in his fights, so you know it doesn't. His cardio doesn't necessarily come into play, but again, fighting in in Colorado, it certainly uh, certainly helps the gas tank. Um, I see uh, Zalil picking Shore apart here early on. I see Shore potentially uh, getting trying to get some takedowns and getting stuffed ultimately. Uh, Zalil continuing the tactical low volume striking, but uh, at some point this fight is going to get to the mat, and I do see uh, Zalil doing enough to impress the judges. I saw a lot of the internet is on the uh, submission here, but I'm going to roll the other way in this one. 
Uh, I'm going to go with the more well-rounded fighter with the better fight IQ. Give me Zaleel by decision at plus 100. Jim, I see you got us on this Lipsky JJ fight. How are we? Uh, how are we getting paid by this one? Well, thanks, Jeff. And you know, this card is a who's who of fighters who have screwed my bets over the course of years. And it was extremely difficult to subsequent earlier on how do I approach this? How do I look at this fight? How do I make money on this card? And this was one that kind of stuck out from the rest. And you know, Arian. Ariana Lipsky, Ariana, Ariane De Silva, whatever she's calling herself, is versing Jasmine Jasuda Vicious here. And I've brought Jasmine's name up in the past as someone who has been an extremely strong fighter. She's a good grappler. She has a lot of good uh, offensive takedown, offensive wrestling. And she's shown in her previous fights, you know, against Fatima Klein, her, her last fight, she had four takedowns. She did a really good job of holding her opponent down, having a 30 27 on all three cards. Um, and she's a fighter, I think, that. You know, when you look at her fights, she has done what she needs to do. She has a great game plan going into these fights. She will throw a lot of takedowns. She'll do striking, but enough to really open the takedown up to get it. She'll try and, you know, she'll do some sub attempts, have a lot of ground control, do some ground and pound, but do enough to win the fight. Her two losses are against Natalia Silva, who is a championship contender, and Tracy Cortez. And, and quite frankly, Tracy Cortez is a great fighter as well. But Tracy Cortez, that fight was kind of weird where Jasmine decided to stand up for whatever reason early in the fight and then never really got her traction towards the later uh, part of that fight and then ultimately ended up losing a decision. But those are her two losses. So they're, they're premium losses. And then when you look at the other side with Lipsky, you know, she is coming off a loss to Kareem Silva. Um, she got taken down, I believe, five times in that fight and they were pretty easy takedowns. I assume this is going to happen again, but her, she is an underdog fighter. She... She won her previous three fights as an underdog. So it's a little scary in this spot. But when I look at this, Jasmine has always been that shining light in that sea of darkness when it comes to these stupid cards that make no sense. And I always go to Jasmine. So my bet here is on Jasmine. It is by decision. It's plus 105. I think she will do enough here. She'll have a good game plan. She's going to be able to take uh, Ariana De Silva, Ariana Lipsky down, probably a controller. The threat here is a sub from either side. I think Lipsky's good enough on the ground where she can throw up sub attempts, um, but I do think Jasmine's good enough to prevent that and vice versa. I think um, Jasmine will try to some sub attempts. I think Ariane has good sub defense at this point on the ground. Ariane to Lipsky is a better striker on the feet. Um, I don't think it's going to matter because I think there's going to be a lot of takedowns being shot by by um, Jasmine, and that's what I'm going with. So once again, Jasmine by decision is plus at plus 105 is my bet for this fight. So with that being said, Mike has a really good fight on the card. It's the Black Beast, Derek Lewis, taking on Jonta Denise. So Mike, how are we going to make that money on this fight? All right, Fanatical Jim, thank you for the handoff, my friend. I'll tell you, Lipsky or Grande, Ariana Grande is probably my favorite one of the two, so I definitely agree with that JJ spot. That being said, though, we've got a main event battle. Derek Lewis, the Black Beast, Going against the Denise character out here who is unbeaten in his UFC career. And uh, coming in on, I guess, essentially short notice. This fight was originally um, canceled and they asked Denise to come into this thing. Listening to the interviews pre-fight there, it sounds like uh, Alexander Romanov was the guy that was going to square up here. They canceled it because they expected this to be a wrestling battle and the UFC apparently wants to see some KOs and they thought if they bring in Denise against Lewis, then that could very well be the case. And it makes sense. You look back at the career with Denise and um, coming off a decision, his most recent fight out there against Carl Williams. But prior to that, Austin Laney knocks his ass out, goes out to the Contender Series, knocks out Nevis, uh, and goes on his way back out there through his undercard circuits in his younger career. On the other side of things, Derek Lewis talking like an old man. He's going to be 40 years old. And, uh, you know, I was listening to some of his pre-fight. This guy's like him against the world. Except when it comes to his children, he's out there talking about how he was a little embarrassed for his kids after his post-fight interview that last time. And things got a little hot and steamy. And it was certainly hot and steamy for his kids at school. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe showing a little signs of uh, age, a little signs of maturity. But look, I think when it comes down to this one, you know, Lewis comes in early. He comes into Canada two weeks early. Not necessarily a huge you know, geographic climb for this guy coming out of Houston, but he said he wanted to focus on his diet. Funny quote was he said, 
hey, if I'm at home and my kids want a hot dog, I'm eating a hot dog. So he got his ass up there early so he can focus on the diet. And he's going for big number 20, 20 wins in his career in the UFC. So lots of things that you might want to side with this guy. But all of a sudden, the bookmakers come out and say, no, nope, you are a dog. And what we know about this guy is A, he's old. B, he's got some ventilation issues below the belt. And C, he loves to start with flying knees. He says the rule changes won't affect this guy. He's not a big knee to the opponent in the head type of situation unless the round starts off that way. And you know what's interesting? He says if they could ask him any rule change that he would make in the UFC, he said he'd have two minutes in between these rounds. He gets a little tired. He says he just touches the seat and it feels like he already has to get up and go. Now he's got three different win or three different fights in a row against Brazilian fighters, and uh, this makes number four. So for some reason, Brazil been mediocre to this guy. He's a win one, lose one, win one, lose one guy in this era. And, um, you know, I think that's the direction that we look at this thing here as well. Now, I'm a big stack guy. You guys know I love the trends. How about this trend? Since the middle of this year, since June, when the UFC has changed gloves, this big component around change gloves, 10% less knockouts, 10% more decisions. I looked at this one here. I saw the fight to start round two is priced at minus 180. And yet we've got an opportunity to take the over one and a half rounds. And it's priced at plus 118. I think this is one of those spots. You've heard me talk about it the last couple of fight cards. Everybody expects this thing to be a quick KO. And we see the exact opposite. I think that's directly attributed to the change in these gloves. Denise ain't going to come over here and roll over. You know, are they going to go to the ground and try to wrestle? I don't think so. I do think it's stand and bang. But I do like a little Denise to win this thing in round two by a knockout. Also looked at that decision prop at plus 700. But I just think this over one and a half rounds, given the changes in the circumstances, the age of the fighter, Denise now starting to show the ability to win by decision, trying to round his technical game out there. I think this is a good opportunity for us to take a plus 118 price on this thing to go over one and a half rounds. And that's how we want to get paid. That's going to be a great fight for the main event. And we've got another great fight coming up here in Mark andre here, the Canadian sensation that Sub's going to talk to us about. Looking forward to hearing how we get paid on this one, Sub. All right. So in this one, we got an interesting matchup here. Dustin Stoltzfus versus Mark andre Berrio. Um, You know, when I first looked at this fight, I was uh, I was a little tempted on the Stoltzfus side. After taping, you know, I think the money line's probably about right. I do think MAB is a... Is, uh, you know, possibly even a little bit of value at that around minus 200 number. Neither of these guys come in in great form, both uh, two and three in their last five. Solstice is uh, two and five in his UFC career, not a great record. So he does need a win here, but uh, I have a feeling he might be on his way out. You know, I've never rated him particularly high. He's one of these guys. He's pretty solid everywhere, but I don't think he's great anywhere. Pretty good hands, decent kicks. He's a pretty good grappler. All right, wrestler. You know, he gets his takedowns more often than not uh, in fights, even though his, his takedown rate is not great. He's only got about a 40% uh, takedown accuracy. There's big downsides, though, on, on the Stoltzfus side. You know, this guy, very low output, uh, very bad cardio, in my opinion. You know, he doesn't completely death gas, but he slows down drastically in fights. And he's got some questionable durability you know we saw him get chinned in two of his last three fights and they're by fighters that are you know fairly dangerous a boost mega made of and bruno ferrero we saw them square off last week but not guys that i'm especially high i'm not guys that i think uh are especially talented so it's not a very good look there it may be on the other hand uh five and seven in his ufc career not a great record but he has probably fought the slightly better level of competition and uh unlike Stoltzfus, this guy is a really high value. I think that's going to be one of the big key components here. And maybe he's throwing 6.12, or pardon me, landing 6.12 strikes per minute, where Dustin Stoltzfus is down at about three and a half strikes per minute. Great pace on this MAB guy. Very good cardio. The downside with him, on the one hand, he can be chinned. We saw that out uh, in his in his last fight over the summer against Joe Pfeiffer, but I don't think Stoltzfus hits, hits anything like Joe Pfeiffer, so I don't really expect Stoltzfus to have much KO equity here. His big downside is he's a slow starter. He drops that round one quite often. You know, for that reason, I even flirted with the idea maybe a Stoltzfus 
uh, plus three and a half on the spread, thinking that Stoltzfus would probably win that round one at a fairly high clip. I don't think it's a terrible bet at minus 120, but what I ended up on here is it may be to win and fight to start round two. You can get that on FanDuel at minus 120. And you can shop this around if you want to on other books. They've got the uh, MAB money line paired with an over one and a half. If you want to turn it into, you know, even money or what have you, you know, maybe you wait for some of the markets to open on a book like Fanatics, where they're oftentimes generous with these sorts of lines. But I have a feeling that this MAB line could end up getting worse. A lot of people are probably going to be parlaying a lot of these Canadian favorites and whatnot. And I think the books might so show some vulnerability later in the week here. Ultimately, I like this MAB and fight to start round two because I don't think MAB is going to get him out of there very often in that first round. In fact, I think that's a very low uh, percentage outcome. But I think he can win rounds two and three at a very, very high clip. As I was saying, Stoltzfus slows down. And uh, MAB's real key to victory in most of his fights is just pacing people late, really putting on that pressure in rounds two and three. And the reason I like this a whole lot better than that uh, Stoltzfus spread is because I think there's a chance that MAB can get him out of there late. You know, the way this guy slows down, I could see MAB really putting it on him as the fight goes on and maybe he gets an elbow and a clinch or a, some sort of finish late. I might even sprinkle MAB round three. You can get that around 10 to one. I don't think that's a, a bad uh, way to, you know, add a little cherry on top to it. So ultimately, MAB and fight to start round two at minus 120 is how I'm playing this one. That's going to do it for First strike this week, MMA Jeff, Fanatical Jim, Subhuman Gaucho, giving you guys the goods. We got a Zalel decision at even money. JJ decision at plus 105. I've got the over one and a half rounds to start in the Lewis fight at plus 118. Subs giving us MAB and round two to start at minus 120. We're going to get popping off around 445 p.m. on Saturday. It's going to be a super busy weekend. And we appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If you could kindly hit the thumbs up button. Put in the comments any of your favorite fights for the weekend. And remember, we're listener supported. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, become a member, and follow us over at X. At sports Money Wins. All time we drop videos, content, any kind of information that comes away from the Sports Money crew. You'll be over there. Get notified first before everybody else. Get them bets before they drop and hit the street. And we're on our way, guys, for the Sports Money team on behalf of all of Sports Money Network. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys Saturday. Thank <laughs> you.